Welcome everybody, welcome, we are live to Advent of Code 2022, Day 8. It's been a week of Advent of Code, so I'm rocking the new hat. Um, it's a nice rain day with a, with a Christmas um, Santa hat, which I quite like. Um, yeah, I've also turned off the, um, the RGB light in the background, just because it messed up with the colour temperature throughout the video. Um, whereas now it's a nice, consistent, um, cool, well, cold white, uh, which I prefer. Um, but yeah, yesterday was a bit harder. So hoping today is nice, uh, a nice simple one, um, and I guess we'll just see how it goes. Let me just go into my environment again, um, and prepare to write input my input. Great. Okay, so we'll see how today's is, and I'll see you after the time lapse. Let's go. Okay, that's part one done. I think that was pretty quick. That was also pretty easy. Um, also a great problem. I love the crit problems. Um, I feel like my code is really inefficient. I have a strong feeling that the next part will screw me over because of my code. Um, so yeah, I'll copy my files over. I'll see you after part two.
Okay. Yeah. That took an insanely long time. I choked so hard there. <laughs> I guess we'll talk about it afterwards. But that was so bad. For part two, that was so, so bad. Anyway, yeah. Um, anyway, let's go to the problem. I, I quite enjoyed that. Part two was insanely frustrating. But that's all my fault. <laughs> um, yeah. Day eight, treetop treehouse. The expedition comes across a peculiar patch of tall trees all planted carefully in a grid. The elves explain that a previous expedition planted these trees as a reforestation effort. Now they're curious to see, they're curious if this would be a good location for a treehouse. Um, wow, the elves now want a treehouse. First, determine whether there is enough tree cover here to keep a treehouse hidden. To do this, you need to count the number of trees that are visible from outside the grid when looking directly along a row or column. The elves have already launched a quadcopter quadcopter to generate a map with the height of each tree. The limpet, for example. Yes, they launched a drone. <laughs> wow. These elves, they, I mean, they have a Santa sled, but no, they launched a drone instead. Each tree is represented as a single digit whose value is its height, where 0 is the shortest and 9 is the tallest. A tree is visible if all the other trees between it and the edge of the grid are shorter than it. Only consider trees in the same row or column, that is, only look up, down, left or right from any given tree. All of the trees around the edge of the grid are visible, since they are already on the edge. There are no trees to block the view. In this example, that only leaves the 9 interior trees to consider, blah blah blah. With 16 trees visible on the edge, blah blah blah. Consider your map, how many trees are visible from outside the grid? Right, yeah, I mean this is almost enough to, to understand the question. So quickly understanding the context, a couple of these rules, like shorter than, um, and I mean the bolded really help here because I kind of just skim right that bit because it's bold. Um, and then just give me that bit. I think, yeah, I mean, I saw the, I saw my input, like, as I was, like, the first thing I do is just, like, put my input and track it into my input file. I saw that as, like, a grid, and I love grid problems. So I was like, I can probably guess, I've seen enough of these, I can probably guess, um, what this is. And, like, yeah, I, I largely guessed what it was correctly. Um, like, I picked out the correct information when I was skimming it, um, and yeah. To be fair, there's not even that much information you need to know. Um, yeah, there's not a whole lot to talk about here about the actual question. But when it comes to my code, let's go into see it. Right, I mean, this was kind of trying to find a run algorithm really fast, which could do exactly what you wanted. Um, so here, X is to just turn the input into a nested list um, of integers as opposed to strings. Um, and then V is a set, so V is just the tree house, all the trees um, that are hidden from the outside. And then here, just really inefficient. Um, I just go through, so for example, this top one, it goes, let's see, it goes downwards down the grid, um, and it checks, it checks right, so you're going down the grid, and you're checking right, um, until you, you see, and you scan until you find a tree, um, that is visible from the outside, well, I guess, what do I should do here, <laughs> um, M is yeah, I mean, you, yeah, here I'm just going through the entire row, um, and I'm checking if any of them are hidden, essentially, from the left side. Um, and if it is visible, then I'm adding that visible tree to my visible um, list. Yeah, so V is my visible list, not my hidden list, it's my visible list. Um, and obviously if I had a hidden list, that would be an issue, because... It may be hidden from one side, but not hidden from the other side, which is why a visible list is probably more, probably better, because if it's visible from one side, you don't care if it's visible from every other side or hidden from every other side. The fact is, it's still visible, um, and that's why a visible list is better here. But yeah, I basically just do that. I go through, I go downwards, and for each for each row in the grid, I move right across the entire row and check um, if the tree is visible. I do that just by keeping track of the maximum height of the tree seen so far. So maximum so far starts off as minus one. I could start off as zero, but they're actually like some of the trees are zero, right? So that wouldn't work because um, it could block off all the zeros. Like it block off this one or this one. Um, so minus one, and you just update m with the maximum. Just using the same idea I always use, updating it with the new maximum height of a tree. And yeah, it's pretty basic. That's what this code does. This code block. And I just repeated the same thing three three more times. <laughs> um, so the first one went downwards and across, the next one goes downwards but across the other way, so it kind of checks from the other side, and then these final two basically do the same thing but opposite, so they go like, 
start from the top, go downwards, start from the bottom, and go down, upwards. Um, yeah, pretty much the same code repeated four times. It's just slightly different variables and things you have to consider, but pretty much the same. And yeah, then, since V is your, your set of all the coordinates of all the visible trees, you just print out how many visible trees there are, how many visible unique coordinates there are, um, and that's your answer. Yeah, so I am literally just going through each side and scanning through the entire row slash column um, and seeing which trees are visible. Right, that, yeah, that's pretty basic. Um, part two. Right, part two. Content with the amount of tree cover available, the elves just need to know the best spot to build their tree house. They would like to be able to see a lot of trees. <laughs> to measure the viewing distance from a given tree, look up, down, left and right from that tree. Stop if you reach an edge or at the first tree that is the same height or taller than the tree under consideration. If a tree is right on the edge, at least one of its viewing distances will be zero. I didn't really read that, which was an issue. The elves don't care about distant trees taller than those found by the rules above. The proposed tree house has large eaves to help it dry. Yeah, I did not know what eave was. I guess there was some <laughs> merit then, I guess, to, for Eric linking these things. Has large eaves to keep it dry, so they would not, they wouldn't be able to see higher than the treehouse anyway. Wow. In example above, consider the middle five. Um, in a second row example, a tree scenic score is found by multiplying together its viewing distance in each of the four directions. So consider each tree on your map. What is the highest scenic score possible for any tree? Right. Let's talk about this question. Um, so, I completely messed up, yeah. As I predicted, my the algorithm I used here, which is terrible, terrible for this. Like, it was a terrible algorithm in the first place, but it was so fast to think of and so fast to code, I did it for part one. Terrible idea for part two, I should have just written it from scratch. Written from scratch. Because I made error after error after error. Because this, adapting this code, in theory, is relatively easy. Like. What I'm doing here is just I'm iterating through these four loops. They just iterate through every single tree um, in the grid, and then they conduct this code. Um, and then can T, you're just keeping track of the maximum um, scenic score. But yeah, I did so badly that I made. I just didn't consider so many different things, and there were so many errors. And I think I usually don't do that. I think that's founded on the fact that my original algorithm was so bad. But I was essentially like reusing this code. I was essentially reusing that code, which meant that I didn't really think through everything. Right, because when you code from scratch, you kind of think through everything as you code it. Whereas here, I just assumed, okay, this is taken care of, now what do I do now? But I couldn't have done that because, obviously, this did not take care of many things. But, I mean, yeah, the, the idea is the same with what my final code is. Um, it's kind of this just idea repeated, this thing repeated three times more. Um, and each time you're just going, you're starting at the tree and going either up, down, left or right. Um, and so this first one, I think, this would be going down. Um, yeah, so you go for, you start from your current tree and you go down to the bottom um, and then you check if the tree you're, you're at is smaller than your current tree. Or like, if if your target tree is greater than the size of the tree you're looking at, then you just add one to O and O, o here is just the counter of how many trees are visible. Um, and if not, then you have to break. And this is kind of Really, like the critical line I missed is this one. Like, no line, just like these four, four characters. If I include those four characters on each of these four loops originally, then I would have saved like 20 minutes of my time. Because um, I think I just kept trying to debug and debug, and there were just so many random issues I didn't consider. And every time I thought of a solution to my issue, the solution just had another edge case which didn't work, and it was really poorly thought out. Um, eventually, I thought through it well enough to find out the answer, and thankfully, I wasn't slapped with a five minute timeout for getting too many wrong, which is good. Um, I was kind of scared for that, to be honest. But yeah, I eventually got it. And the idea of adding like the O plus equals one here is because if if the tree is still taller than your current tree, you can still see it. You just can't see the trees after that. Um, and so that means, like, this is only checking this line. It's only checking if the tree, current tree is smaller than the tree you are at. Um, but you can actually see one tree that's greater than or equal to your tree's height. And that's what the O plus here, O plus equals one is doing. It's saying, oh, I mean, this is the final tree I can see, so let's add one to O. But since it's the final tree I can see, according to the rules, I have to break. Um, and that's what I do here. And then, yeah, just repeat it three more times for the different directions you can go in. 
um, changing the coordinates and things like that. But yeah, I think uh, really dumb errors. <laughs> oh well, um, Eric caught me out on that one. Um, what else was I going to say? Um, yeah, I think I got a bit confused because there are several things you can do. Like um, what was I going to say? You can. Like for example, if you're on the edge, like I got a bit, I got, I got a bit confused. Cause like if you're on the edge, then what do I do then? Do I plus eagles? Do I plus minus one? Do I set O to zero? Yeah, I just thought of all of these really weird edge cases. I try to attack each of them one by one, and then just kick in more and more. And then like the second I just stopped working, stared at the question, thought for like a minute, I came up with this solution: just the O plus equals one um, chucking here. I guess that's testament to how you should probably every now and then just like stop, think about it and actually put in a good generalized solution that always works. I think it's O plus equals one, that works. As opposed to like the 10 billion different if statements I was chucking in there. Um, and all those really random conditions I was chucking in there. Um, this is this works. Yeah, I think I think I got a bit too carried away by the fact that it's a grid. And I'm pretty I'm usually <laughs> pretty good at grids, not today. I guess part one was good, I don't know. Yeah, but part two that was not good. <laughs> that was that was pretty bad actually. Um, it took me so so long. Even though, yeah, I mean the algorithm I use, it's not definitely not great. It's terrible actually, but like, it's not that bad, right? I don't know how I messed up so much. Um, anyway, yeah, that's my code. <laughs> hopefully yours is better. I'm sure yours is better. Um, hopefully you understood mine. Probably you don't want to, to be fair. <laughs> so yeah. Um, but yeah, that's my that's my code for today. Um, not happy with part two, but extremely happy with part one. Although, of course, my algorithm is still not well thought out of. I need to f work on that. I haven't done the grid problem for a while, to be fair. Maybe that's the reason. Because I just haven't got... Yeah, I haven't done it for a while, so I'm not really used to used to it. But they really used to be my favourite. Um, like, um, last year, day 25, that was a grid problem. And I managed to do quite well, because I love grids. I'm really good at grids. Um, usually. <laughs> anyway. Go on, two stars. Brings you up total up to 16 and the calendar looking same as before um, I really am beginning to think these green things are trees now <laughs> based after today's problem I feel like you can have some cool visualizations with today's problem yeah people are going to be visualizing it loads anyway leaderboard yeah hmm, I swear the lead is minimized oh well yeah I mean leaderboard is now kind of thinning down to the, to the classic really smart people which is really consistent and really really good. Yeah. Um, let's check today. Wait, was Belarus not on this leaderboard at all? <laughs> wow, that's actually crazy. He had such a great lead from yesterday that he, even though, despite not getting on the leaderboard today, he was high enough. Yeah, he won both times yesterday. He was high enough to stay first by good margin as well. But anyway, these these times. Let's check. One thirty for part one. And up goes up to four thirty. I, I swear I was like, somewhere like here. Man, <laughs> that was good. I mean, part two. I guess we don't talk about that. I was probably like, <laughs> very far down. How long did that take me? Like forty minutes in total. <laughs> Not good. Um, yeah. I mean, these are some good times. Yeah, I feel like a lot of these people kind of just did a really shabby part one solution, <laughs> and then after reading part two, I had to severely fix that solution. Which is why the times are largely um, quite a lot larger, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, these are some pretty good times, though. Stats. Ooh, yeah. Day 7 was a tough one. Still only 70,000 people have sold it, but quite a lot, to be fair. Like, That's a lot of... You have to be like a good programmer to solve part 7, in my opinion. So that's, that's a lot of good programmers doing AOC. Um, yeah, day is even less, though. People were probably thrown off from yesterday, I can't lie. Because today wasn't that hard to be fair, at least part one. And yeah, not many people have done part one. I need 58,000. Right, private leaderboard. This will be interesting. Yeah, a lot of people have done today's and got all 16 stars. Um, ooh, Danish and Abner have a cup uh, catching up to Anonymous. Yeah, he didn't do too well today. Um, Mr. Quill, he, he grabbed the win. Wow, that's a first. <laughs> um, yeah, nice. Well done to him. Well, let's look at these deltas. <laughs> I mean, where am I? 24 minutes. 
probably including the talking like 22 minutes. Still huge. Yeah, huge. Beaten by... Yes, the people this morning managed... Yeah, they managed some really good times. It seems to be like 15 minutes was, was the was the good time. Yeah, how long the part one Ooh, Mystic Will getting in there with 10 minutes. He definitely has pre-written functions for this. Definitely. Um, yeah. Oh wait, what? And it almost took 40 minutes. Okay. <laughs> I feel a bit better now. Um, I mean, he's probably like in his uni dorm, I don't know. Probably getting yelled at by his, by his roommates for waking everyone up at 5am every single day. So. I don't know. That makes me feel better. <laughs> um, but yeah. That's, that's day eight done. That was, that was an interesting day. I quite liked the puzzle. Um, part one I really liked, obviously. Part two. Yeah, I mean, nothing wrong with the puzzle, to be fair. I just made a ton of really dumb mistakes, but not happy with my performance, but I think I'm really happy with, with the day. Um, fun day. Let's see, there's um, 20, 17 more to go. That's just over two weeks. Um, until Christmas, which is great. So, see you tomorrow for day nine, and we'll get one day closer to Christmas. Bye.